Oh. And I see Queen Mab have been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomies over men's noses as they lie asleep, her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs, the cover of the wings of grasshoppers, her traces of the smallest spider web, her collars of the moonshine's watery beams, her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film, her wagoner a small gray-coated gnat, not half so big as a round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. Time out of mind the fairy's coachmakers, and in this state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Air courtiers' knees that dream of curtsies straight, or lawyers' fingers who strain dream on fees, or ladies' lips who straight on kisses dream, which oft the angry Mab with blisters plagues because their breaths with sweetmeats tainted are. Sometimes she gallops o'er courtier's nose and then dreams he of smelling out a suit, and sometimes comes with a lithe pig's tail tickling a parson's nose. Now a lies a deep then dreams of another benefice. Sometimes she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches and bascados, Spanish blades, of heaths five fathom deeth, and then anon drums in his ear, at which he starts and wakes, and being thus frightened, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. This is that very Mab that plats the names of horses in the night, and bakes the elf locks in foul sluttish hairs, which once untangled much mitch horsen bodes. This is the hag, when maids lie on their backs, that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she.